Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to Open Office Hours. I am Crystal Hinkle. I'm part of the team. And we've got the rest of the team joining now. So I will let the ladies introduce themselves. Hey, everybody. It's Tatiana. Welcome. Everybody, it's Hannah. Happy Friday. Welcome. Hey, everybody. It's Carla. Hi there. So yes, I don't know how it happened, but it's Friday already. Um, I see it was kind of a short week, but here we are, super excited to be here. So um, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. This is open office hours. This is a forum really to ask whatever questions that you have. So it doesn't matter where you are at in your journey with Synchro, whether you've never looked at it before, you're trialing, or you know, you've been a Synchro subscriber for a while. So we're it doesn't really matter. We're really happy to have you all. Um, we we do our best to answer questions we're really happy we've got Carla joining us today so she really does a lot of our um, more extensive training sessions for our sinker customers so on that she hopefully you know will will maybe not be so delayed on some of the technical questions that we sometimes have to like go on the back end and ask um so we're really happy to have you here Carla so thank you um and really we use the Q&A um so that we can kind of manage questions as they're rolling in. It's the best way for us to stay organized. And then um, for anything that we want to provide resources for you, we do put it in the chat box. So just make sure to click on those links while you're in the session or they'll go away afterwards. Um, so with that said, um, like I am, I'm seeing quite a few questions already in the Q&A. Nick is here and ready to rock and roll this morning. <laughs> so, um, uh, so what we're going to do, let's see here. I'm going to, I haven't read any of these. Um, yeah, Nick, I, I, the don't ever be sorry. You've come prepared with questions. Um, and what I will, will, I will say is just depending on, you know, we do try to get through all of your questions, but if if for any of you that are in an active trial, if you have not had a product tour, um, you do have an assigned account executive that would be happy to provide that for you. So just letting you know that that is an option as well. Um, so with that said, let's kind of, let's rock and roll. Carla, do you wanna grab the first one? Yep, so Nick asks, we have kinds of sub organizations or sites where one person is the finance contact for each of the sub organizations. Synchro seems to let us create a person record for each sub organization using the same email address. So multiple person records records all the same email address, same email address. But what happens when that email address raises a ticket, which organization would be chosen? The way that we kind of match an email, an inbound email is if there is a ticket open with that email address already, it'll attach the inbound email to the open ticket. If there is not an open ticket, it's going to do the best match that it can. And so if there are multiple email addresses that are that that multiple contacts that have that email address, then um, it'll actually do its best guess. We don't have a way to force it to do that um, if there are no open tickets. So uh, you may wanna look at like how you're adding those in so that we make sure that it chooses the right one. Um, and support is happy to help with that if you, are, uh, if you have additional questions on that. Is that me? <laughs> Sorry, I like grabbed that a while ago. Um, I was just gonna quickly answer. Nick was wondering, is it possible to have custom fields configured where some are consistently on every ticket, but others vary by ticket or problem type? It seems that custom fields cannot be added to the ticket per se, but as a group, but only one group can be added to a ticket and custom fields are not recommended to be duplicated between field groups. For example, we wanna add urgency and severity and other fields to every ticket, but then depending on the ticket type, we want different specific additional fields. Um, so 
as far as I know, and if you guys have a different response, the custom fields are absolutely dependent on like you select you you drop down which custom field you want and then you can have specific fields associated with that custom field so there's not there's not a way to have like existing custom fields on every ticket and then um adding custom fields as you go so i i think you're you're interpreting the software properly on this one i will pass it along as a feature request though all right, I'll grab this next one from Nick. It seems you can't create a ticket filter using any of the custom fields. So if we created a custom field for severity, we can't create a view of tickets logged as severity level one. Good question. So I am here in my tickets module. And so if you hit this button, which is next to the search bar, this will be able to create you saved views that then you can customize down um, a certain view and you can actually do it against your custom fields. So when I create a new view, the custom fields are actually going to be under ticket type. And so here, this is where you'll have all of your custom fields be available to you that then you can go ahead and make kind of saved views against. So then that way, if you want to do a bill, a status is new, and then of your severity level, that that's going to be the way you'd like to do that. And then if you want to make that a particular default view, just go ahead and hit modify filters. You can make these views private or public, and then you can also make them the default view. And so hopefully that is helpful to you there. And then can tickets be linked to each other to create sub tickets effectively? If so, is there a limit on the hierarchy hierarchy depth? <laughs> and if so, is it possible to aggregate all the ticket cost time and materials into the master ticket? So we don't have parent child uh, relationships for tickets. We do have where you can actually create a worksheet to then relate the tickets together. So let's say you do have one master type project, you can actually use worksheets to then create and I think we have one, let's see. Yep, we have a parent ticket one kind of already built out as an example to where you can put in the links to the child tickets right here. It won't necessarily bring over the charges from those tickets into the master one. Um, if you wanted to do that, you would have to merge the child tickets into the parent ticket and then the charges would be combined. And so hopefully that helps you there. And I think I have one more, let's see. Oh, I can't find it in the list, but it's about, um, oh, I found it right here, about an enhanced report builder. And so under the reports section, we're gonna have two builders for you, an internal report builder and an executive summary report builder. And these are awesome. You can configure your own templates. And so in here, if we open the report templates and create a new one, that then you're actually able to pick between text summaries, as well as visual summaries, and then be able to create and customize your own report on different blocks here. Hopefully that helps. Awesome, that was super helpful. That was actually the perfect segue to my question, which you answered like 90% of, so thank you. I'm gonna share my screen and this question is also from Nick. He says, is there a concept of teams or queues in ticket management? We want to have certain tickets that are restricted to a specific team, for example, sales tickets or internal IT tickets. Ideally, we actually want to restrict tickets from people that don't have the skill to resolve them, but I su suspect that's too complex. In the meantime, how do we create a queue for sales tickets such that anyone with sales skills or responsibilities could pick it up? This is it, the, the safe ticket search that Hannah was showing you. Um, you can create either public ones, which is going to be available to everyone, or private ones, which is going to be just available to you. This is done on a user per user basis. And then again, you can use either by the status or the ticket type, issue type, custom field, um, however you want to set that up. Uh, so if it's like sales tickets, you can make sure that that's the sales is the ticket type, something like that. So there you go. That is how you would set that up. And I think I have a couple more in here. Um, next one is also from Nick. He says, when an estimate with multiple line items is approved, can Synchro create a master ticket with sub tickets for each of the line items? And can some line items be flagged to not create a ticket if not needed? So I'm going to share my screen. There isn't a way to create sub ticket types, but I will show you a couple things here in the estimates. So um, really true estimates within Synchro, once you publish them, 
Once you create them, add the line items that you need, publish them, the customer approves via the customer portal. You have the option here, so I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. You have the option here to either convert into a invoice right away or to create it into a ticket right away. So it will pull in whatever line items in here. And so if you say, yep, we're quoting him, this uh, Larry's business, 10 hours of, whoops, not 19. 10, uh, 10 hours of labor for this upcoming project. Um, again, once they approve, let's pretend they approved via the customer portal, which is also available, but I'm not gonna waste time showing you. You can create a new ticket, which will carry over all line items from that estimate. So there isn't a way to pick and choose as far as I know, which line items are carried over, which are not. Um, so again, when you create the ticket, that will be pulled in as a pending ticket charge already. Um, and it'll be listed here, mine is billed at $0 an hour. So um, that that is the way that it's meant to carry over is anything that you've quoted to the customer. If they've approved, it's gonna get added to the ticket. You can take a deposit from here or you can turn this ticket into an invoice after you've tracked time and left notes and all that good stuff. So hopefully that is helpful for you there. And then I think I'll grab one more and then I'll let somebody else do some talking. Uh, I have uh, another Question from Nick. He says, I can't see any template driven system documentation functionality. Are there any plans to add this or are we best off using third party tool like Hudu or IT Glue? Uh, yes, we do have templates through the documentation through Synchro. That's just one of the uh, options that you can choose here when you're initially building out documentation. So I'm going to click into here, just click new page, and you can choose to choose what kind of page type here. So if you want to build out a template, you can say, you know, step one, step two, step three of what or like whatever you're trying to create. Once you create this as a template, um, you will be able to then let's pretend this is a new documentation page. Um, maybe I want this to be internal process for my text to know how to fix problem ABC. You can now apply that template and you can say template on how to do this one thing. There you go. Step one, two, three. So that is the the templates that are built out through Synchro. If you need something a little more fancy than that, then yes, please do use our integrations over in the App Center with IT Glue or Hudu. If you guys haven't heard of that one, that one's actually super popular. I hear from you guys all the time how much you love it. Uh, so definitely check those out. We do not bill you to use those through Synchro. So that's it for me. All right, I will go next. Nick has a question. When reporting time logged against tickets, it's important that clients see all the time logged and the value. So if we log time against a sales ticket, it's non-billable, but we still want clients to see the amount and the value of the time spent. Similarly, similarly, on an AYCE contract, we want the total amount of time and cost of that time shown in the client on the invoice, but as 100% discounted. Currently, what do we do to present a detailed timesheet report with time costs, subtotals for billable work, contract work, project work where the project cost was a fixed price, discounted work where there where we've written off the cost, and sales account management work which costs us but is discounted to clients. So there isn't a way if if there's a discount on it, it'll show the discounted price and not the full price. And if it's non-billable labor, there isn't a way to show what the original cost was. But I was sitting here thinking about it while while we were uh, others were talking, and I think we might be able to get away around this if you actually put that price in the description. Or I'm gonna show my screen really quickly here. There's a way to uh, possibly force it in. So if you go into your ticket de ticket preferences, down under the additional settings, there is this uh, customized text for ticket timer charges. You uh, might be able to put something in here that has the total amount. Whether you use the description or this, it won't total the time for you, but it will show the original cost. And you could use that to kind of get around where uh, we, we are, billing for zero, but you want to show the original cost on that. So I hope that helps with that. Um, the next question is, what is the process for approving time log entries? And actually, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, time log entries on a ticket. Is it possible to prevent a ticket from time log entries from being 
invoiced until the ticket is resolved. Um, oh, actually, I shouldn't have stopped sharing because there is a way. Also here, oh, in the same ticket timer charges by default, you can uncheck this so things are not charged, and then you can charge them as you go. And then automatically, we have it where if you uh, try to resolve a ticket that has uncharged time on it, it asks, asks you if you want to charge that. So that should be able to get that for you. And then I have one more question uh, from Corey. Is there a script to remove Screen Connect? It's causing us misery. While we don't have a script to remove it, we do have a script in the community forum that should get you started. There may be some uh, follow-up information you could get from Screen Connect to finish it, but there is a community script uh, that, that, again, should get you started. It just doesn't have the remove on it, but you could add that in. Hope that helps. All right, I think it's my turn. I just have a couple quick answers. I think um, one of the one of the questions is just asking um, regarding editing invoice templates or really any templates at all. Um, asking if we have any connections for plugins or skins or anything like that. Um, so right now um, we do have you know the HTML editor um, where you can then view a preview and that kind of thing, but there are no plugins at this point. I don't know. Um, I've seen some folks do some really amazing things with their <laughs> with their templates. Like I had no idea it was being sent from Synchro. So I know it's really possible to customize those, but um, there are no plugins at this time. Um, I think I grabbed a few other ones that I thought I could answer right away. Oh, Nick was wondering, um, I don't know if I'm able to speak to this, but the thinking behind limiting the number of priority levels to four. So um, I know that the priority levels right now, you know, they're not, a, they're one of the only non-customizable fields on the ticket. They are, you know, they do do some things on the back end. Um, so as far as thought process behind that, I, I can't really speak to the developer um, thought process there. But when it comes to the different priority levels and then being able to mix and match that with fully customizable statuses as well as issue types, usually you can configure some pretty intricate automations and that sort of thing. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, then let's see. Okay. Um, the release date for policy inheritance. Um, I'll grab it. I don't have a specific date. I do know that it's on being actively worked on. Um, it's coming very soon. I would keep your eyes and ears out, um, but I don't have a specific date. Let's see, did I grab any other ones? Um, it. I, th I think I know the answer to this, but block me on this, Carla, if not. Uh, the question is, is there a way to run a script to update asset custom fields for an offline or inactive asset? I know this works when the asset is live. So yes, of course, um, we do have a great PowerShell scripting engine that does allow you to update custom fields and that sort of thing. But if the machine is offline, uh, that script will not run again until it, it shows active. Is that right? Okay. All right, so yep, sorry, Randy, on that one. Um, let me see here. I think that's all that I grabbed for now. So I'm gonna pass it on over. All right, I'm gonna go next. All right, I have a question from Alex. I have created an alert on a specific event ID and I get an alert. How do I make it auto generate a ticket for that alert? Great question. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. And so with your RMM alerts that fire off, they can come into this alerts tab here. And so you can see where you can manually create a ticket. But this is also the easiest way to manage your automated remediations where from specific alerts, you can have it automatically create a ticket for you. So here in the automated remediation, if I add a trigger category 
that is a event log that then from there being able to have Synchro go ahead and convert that to a ticket for you. And so again, the easiest way to get there is through the alerts tab here and then to manage your automated remediations. So hopefully that helps. Then Dudley has a question. Is there an easy way for an end user to add their contact info for the computer and then have it show as the default contact for tickets from the computer in the future? Good question. The end users don't have control on assigning the assets to themselves. So there's no way for them to like um, enter in their information and then assign themselves to the device. You would have to do that. And they do have to be an added contact in Synchro. So I'm here on the assets and RMM page. Here's my device. And then for the contacts at Larry's business, I can go ahead and pick which contact is assigned to this device. So let's say they did open a ticket like from the system tray icon and entered in their information. So when they do that, the information will be here in the communications box. You would need to pop open the customer page and then add their info really quick just into the contacts page. That way they can be added as a contact. Then in the ticket, you can go ahead and assign the ticket to that contact. And then that way it'll go ahead and email them back and forth as the communication there. And then you can even add in the device they're on. So if you wanna go ahead and look for the device, add it on and then assign them to the device, you could do that as well. And then I think I have one more. Keith is asking, is there a way to create a custom report under the reporting tab that lets, us, lets me choose Windows build along with PC name, last sync? Yes. So in the report section under RMM reports, there'll be an asset audit report to where then you can customize the information that is shown there. So here it'll give you the table columns and you'll be able to pick what you'd like to see on that report. Okay, I'll go next. Are you done, Hannah? Sorry. Yes, I'm done. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so Nick asks, when invoices are pushed through to zero, is there an option to map line items against specific zero account codes? So automatically, any products that you have in Synchro, when you put them on an invoice, it should automatically map to a product in zero. Auto then that should happen all automatically. Um, but the account codes would be something if you needed it to be a, a specific kind of account code in zero you would need to do that in zero once that product is created but the products themselves will map over with some generic information um, so i think that, that that got you what you needed if not please do re-ask the question and i have a couple more here alex asks I'd like to be able to scan barcodes from the mobile app. Is that possible? It absolutely is. You will need to have the barcodes uh, onto those products that you might scan or if it's tickets or whatever it is that you're gonna be scanning. And then you actually use the camera in your mobile app. There's a, some settings that you have to do sometimes to get that to work. Sometimes it works more automatically than others. But once you get that configured, it should then be able to use your camera to scan those barcodes. And I believe I have one more ah, from Michelle. My other question is about QuickBooks integration. When we first integrated into Synchro, we were using both QuickBooks and Synchro to invoice and it caused duplicate invoice numbers to show up and, I, and it wouldn't sync. Is there any advice at resolving this issue? And I'm going to share my screen real quick. And we've seen this issue um, with, um, invoicing, especially if you're doing it in both, it can duplicate. Uh, my suggestion is if you wanna to continue to do it into both, in QuickBooks, figure out your naming, your numbering conviction, convention, and then come in here and for Synchro, pick a different convention, maybe something with, like with the year and the month um, or some other thing that's that, so you know that none of the numbers are going to overlap when we create our invoice numbers so that they'll sync into QuickBooks without duplicating those invoice numbers. Hope that helps. Super helpful. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much, Carla. I'm loving this. Okay, I'm going to go next. I have a list of questions and I was super excited to answer them. Jen says, I have a custom field type that gives me the option of business or break fix. Is there a way to automatically fill that out on a customer, 
is there an automatic way to fill out that custom field based on a customer? So I'm going to share my screen. I'll show you guys what she's talking about. Unfortunately, this is going to be a feature request, but I will still show this. So she's saying um, if you're filling out a ticket for Larry's business so that that, uh, that custom field would automatically pre-populate, unfortunately, that isn't the case. You would still have to use this drop down menu. So whether you customize this custom field saying like Larry's emergency ticket or um, again, whatever you might need to do. But unfortunately, there isn't a way to have this custom field pre-populate in accordance with the customer. I'm so sorry about that. I will pass that along for you. I actually hear that kind of often. Um, so I will pass that along for you. Uh, Shane says, is there a way to get a report of all installed Synchro agents by customer? Ideally, that would that I would schedule monthly. So yes, Hannah showed this and I will just really, so I'm gonna kind of quickly zip over it, but if you go over to your Synchro reporting, you go to your asset audit here, I've opened it in a new tab. You can search this by customer and then you can have this running on a schedule once a month if you wanted to. You can search either by asset type. So if you're only looking for Synchro endpoints, go ahead and put in the Synchro device. When you run the report, the information will pre-fill. These columns here are customizable if you click this button right here, or you can actually pull in a saved search as well based on a huge number of really granular criteria. And where you find that saved search is here within the assets and RMM section over to the left, this little magnifying glass is, I feel like it's like a little secret room or like a secret door. Sometimes people just miss it, um, but it's there for you to hopefully make life easier. And then again, you can search by any one of these parameters, even like a custom, custom field if you wanted to. The point is you can pull in the results of the saved asset search into this asset report and have that coming into your inbox on a monthly basis if that's what you wanted to do. Todd says, is there, uh, or Todd says, how can I build time and run a script from ticket automation? So I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you how to do this through our automated remediation. So let me clean up some tabs here. So through Synchro, when you're doing ticket automation, this is not necessarily going to give you any RMM capabilities. So where I found this is if you go over to the admin section, scroll down to your tickets, preferences, and then open your ticket automations. Or I'm sorry, right here ticket automations right there. Uh, so when you're creating a new one, this is more of like um, keeping your tickets organized, not necessarily running RMM capabilities. You'll notice that none of the none of these actions really have to do anything with RMM. It's more like updating the ticket, emailing the customer, posting to Slack, posting to Teams. Where you want to look is here in the automated remediation through Synchro. So here in the RMM alerts, click into manage automated remediation. I've opened it in a new tab here. We're building a new one. So if you uh, to go back to your original question, which let me find that again. Um, I think it was how to create um, how to create a ticket and add time to the ticket automatically that would need to be triggered by an automated remediation. This is where you can say if this thing happens, whatever it might be that's important to you, let's say it's an agent offline alert or whatever it might be, you can even say if it happens for this specific customer happens for Larry's business, Larry's business is VIP, I need to know about it right away. You can say I need Synchro to create a ticket or I'm sorry to run a script. And as part of this script, you want to include those PowerShell commands, which I'll show you in just a second, uh, that create the ticket and add time to the ticket immediately um, as part of that script. So if you click new script here, I'm going to scroll down. This is available on any script. New scripts are ones that you've imported from the library. But you want to import this uh, Synchro PowerShell module. And then you can say, as part of the script that's automatically fixing whatever that problem is, you can say, I want it to also create a ticket for me and then add time to the ticket, specify how much time, um, if you're billing for that time or not, clear alert, automatically close the ticket as well. Hopefully that's helpful for you there. Let me know if I missed anything because I, I, I clicked that I wanted to answer it and it disappeared and I can't find it. So if you, if you have a follow-up questions, let me know. Uh, Jen says, is there a way to put lines on invoices and estimates visually make the sections on the invoice. That would be up to you. Crystal showed this section already, but I'll show you where to find it again over in our admin section under PDF and email templates. You can customize this either using the built-in editor that we have through Synchro, or if you or someone on your team or you want to hire somebody to make this look super fancy with beautiful distinctions and lines and things like that, um, you, it, you it is written in HTML, so you can customize that in whatever way that you want right here. Let's see, 
last one for me, Michelle says, hi, thanks in advance for your help. Thank you for being here. I'm uh, wondering if there's a way to run a daily report on activity done to a customer's computer, mainly remote support, how many minutes is spent on the computer for each date, um, things like that. So yes, I'm gonna share my screen one last time and this will be the last one for me for now. Uh, but there's, there's two ways to think about this. If you are tracking time on your ticket, you would be or on tickets when you are doing any type of work. Uh, that is probably the best way to do it because then you know where your time is being spent and you can see who you're billing that time for. So um, if you are taking that route of where you're tracking time every time you launch into a remote session or you're fixing a problem or you're driving on site or whatever it might be, the tech hours report is gonna be helpful to you. It'll show you on a tech for tech basis what time, what date, which customer, how long, which ticket did you bill for it? And get, it'll give you a weekly total if that's how you're running it. Um, and then you can compare this tech to tech. Or the other option is if you just want to see what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis, we do have the asset activity report or activity audit right here. Um, specifically with remote access, it will show, for example, when the session started, but it will not say how long it was um, it was active for. So I'll show you this in just a second. It might take a couple minutes to load. Um, but it would be the asset audit report that'll show like, hey, for this customer, here's all the stuff that has been going on. Um, it looks like we've been super busy today. It's Friday. We've been working hard, starting remote sessions on and off all day. So there you go. That's how you see it. That's it for me. Okay, I'm just going to grab a few here just really quick. I did, um, happy Friday to you as well, Manuel. I, I was just going to read this out loud in case anyone else is experiencing this. Should we be prompted for credentials when launching Splashtop RMM from within Synchro? We have changed policies and rebooted the endpoints, but still get prompted. I was under the understanding that it would function like Synchro Live. We do have bring your own splash shop on the endpoints as well, and obviously expect those sessions to prompt for credentials. So I just uh, tagged Andy to ask him specifically on this one. And what he is saying is that if you do have credentials set up for the bring your own, um, it will override. And that's why it's, it's essentially asking, it's it's basically adding the requirement of additional credentials within Synchro as well. Um, so that was the answer I got from Andy. And then this one from Emily. And again, if, if, if I'm answering out of turn, please just speak up. So the question is, how do we configure our Synchro policies to install Office updates? Um, so, and, and you're asking if it's under Windows updates. So Windows updates will not include off like Windows Office products. Um, you know, if you go into third party application patch management, you do have access to the entire chocolatey repository. And there are some Microsoft Office products in there. Um, but the Windows updates will not manage the Microsoft Office updates. Um, am I on the right track there? And that can they do that with third party application patch management? No. Um, mo mo most Office products cannot be there's there uh, chocolatey just doesn't offer those updates i have seen lots of people do it successfully through scripting but you'll need to get with microsoft to get like the parameters about what that would look like perfect thank you carla I'll hop in just super quick. I see multiple questions about the MSP sales sheet. I did drop that into the chat box for you. Um, so if you guys are curious, we did build some marketing materials to help you guys sell your services to your customers. Um, there's two different versions of this. They both contain the same information. Both are awesome. One is super easy to use. It's literally just a Google Doc. Again, it's in the chat box if you wanna grab it. But how you use this is you just click file, make a copy, rename it and put your own information in there. So this is just really easy talking points of why somebody should hire you. Hey, if you want to move from our break fix plan to our MSP plan, we will make sure that your pro, uh, IT approach is proactive and pre preventative, not reactive. Um, we'll help minimize downtime. We'll make sure that everything is secure. When you hire a brand new employee, we'll make sure they're up and running on day one. Instead of two weeks later, they don't know how to log into their computer, all that good stuff. So definitely use 
this Google Doc. It's just a really nice, clean, obviously put your logo in there, your business name, stuff like that. Or there's a pretty fancy version, also really easy to use. It's through Canva. You do have to sign up for a free Canva account. I think it's literally just a free version. It's not a free trial. Um, and again, it's, it's the same exact information. And you can just make it more beautiful. Put your own company logos in here, your own fonts, colors, all that good stuff is just... Uh, again, great information to share with your customers when you are, um, whether you're starting out or you're looking to grow your business, uh, hopefully that there's going to be some good benefits. And you, even if you want to kind of repurpose just that information onto your website or something like that, some really good pointers in there. Our marketing team did a great job with those. So that's it for me. Okay, I will hop in. Randy asks, we have scripts that open tickets and times, the times don't automatically get marked as charged as out normal time, as, as our normal times do. This makes us have to go into the unbuild time report and select all of them. Uh, so if you have the ticket timer charges by default enabled, it should automatically charge for those. If it isn't, do reach out to support. We'll be happy to figure out why that's not happening for you, but it should happen if you have the charge by default enabled. Also, it would be nice if this if this report had an option to only view unbilled time. While we don't have a report for unbilled time, we do have the pending charges. Um, and so, uh, actually, no, that's not the right report I wanted to talk about. There is a line item report for your invoices and for your tickets, and you can go in there. It would give you more information and you would need to pare it down to any unbilled time, but that should uh, there should be a report that you can get uh, essentially more information than you want, but there, but that information does exist. The next question, can you show adding event log entries from monitoring and automated remediation? Um, I feel like this is the thing that Tatiana kind of went over, so I'm not sure if I stole this question from her, but even if I did, um, I, we can, there's multiple ways to do it, so I'm going to show this really quick. Um, how I would do it, which uh, I think is a little bit differently than she showed. And the beautiful thing about Synchro is there's often many, many ways to do a thing. So to start off with, uh, we would create a, an event log monitoring policy. So you can come in here and there are all these preset ones, but if you wanted to add a new one, you just come in here, you give it a name, uh, and then you're gonna wanna create a new event log entry. And then, so say that, that you're just wanna, um, check for event log 125. You can do this. There are these additional fields. I like to tell people less is more on the events. The less you put in here, the more likely you are gonna be able to trigger on exactly what you're looking for. Once you create this, if you come into your automated remediations, you can come in here and either do a trigger off of that exact event log or you could come in and do a body and something like 125 um, and then tell it to create um, any whatever whatever you want to happen off that, create a ticket or, or whatever that is. Um, so those would come off of those. And I think I had one more. Yes, Dudley asks, are variables coming over on a per customer basis? Example, scripts would be able to use these variables Documentation would be able to use these var variables. I know some synchro fields are available to do this already. We just need custom variables. We don't have a way to share variables across the different modules in synchro. synchro. You could do some custom fields. Um, I don't know how much sharing they are with the documentation portion, but a custom field would be more uh, likely to work than a custom variable across the different modules. And that is... I think all my questions for right now. Thank you so much, Carla. I love all the ways, so many multiple ways to set up and that's we appreciate that you're here that we can show us all the ways. Yay. Um, I'm gonna jump in real quick. Corey is asking, is there any way to remove an asset if it's been taken out of service for a certain amount of time? And so Corey, there's not like an automated way that Synchro can recognize, hey, this hasn't ha asset hasn't checked in, so it needs to be deleted, so it's going to delete it. But you can create a saved search for those. So here, I know Tatiana showed the saved search earlier. 
if you want to search for assets that haven't checked in for 10 days and just save it. And then that way on a routine basis, you can check those out and then delete the ones that you don't need to be in there. Um, but Synchro won't automatically delete those. And then Jen is asking, is there a way to run a report and fix Synchro assets that are not tied to a recurring invoice asset counter? I need to audit and make sure antivirus assets are being billed for. So again, kind of using these saved asset searches and depending on how you have your recurring invoice set up, you can actually execute a saved search for specific antivirus. And I'm kind of assuming that you're using an integrated antivirus. And so here, whether it's MCSoft, Bitdefender or Webroot, you can go ahead and create a saved search based on those. And this is what you can pull into re a recurring invoice. And so you can actually double check that count against a the managed antivirus summary report. And then that way you can make sure that that count matches up with this count here. And then as well as just being able to see then which devices um, don't have the antivirus against your total count. Hopefully that helps. Awesome, awesome, thank you so much. So I have a question here. Is there a way to check the performance of our five text the reports module in synchro does not seem to be user friendly so sorry you feel that way let me show you a couple things so um we do have i, I showed this report already but i wanted to kind of just highlight it for this question specifically over in the reports scroll down to employees and ticket time by technician so this is going to be who that post that poll <laughs> kind of scared me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I can't even vote. What, what is up with that since I'm a panelist? What is happening? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, ticket time by technician report. This will show you uh, based on the time frame that you say. If you select none, it will show all. Um, again, it will, this, this is going to show for all five of your techs, what's been going on with them this week, where are they spending all of their time? So this is one report, you can even run this if you wanted to, um, I've seen MSPs run this like on a daily basis, and then just put it into your inbox and be like, okay, well, demo engineer worked eight hours today, and then the other person worked, I don't know, nine, so like, what's what's the difference there? Something like that. And then separately, I, I apologize, I did not realize that this has not been released yet, but coming very, very soon, uh, for those of you guys that have already seen the executive summary report builder, builder being the keyword here, it's very powerful. It's absolutely phenomenal. You can run those on schedules, but we have a very similar type of a layout coming with the internal report builder uh, where you can build out custom reports of what you need based on what is important to you and schedule that into your inbox as well. So that is what I have there. And then a question from Scott. Is it possible to have, oh, I love this question. Okay. Is it possible to have a specific client have special pricing on a recurring invoice RMM package? For example, I don't want to give a specific client a lower price on monitoring plus web route. I want to, to give a specific client a lower price on monitoring plus web route. Is there a way to edit that specific customer's recurring RMM package item within the recurring invoice? Or would I need a separate RMM package such as monitoring plus web route dash special? So there's two ways that you could do this. And I will show you both. You can pick which one you like. If you go over to your recurring invoices through Synchro, I'm going to open that as well as products and services, as well as contracts. And the this is going to be the probably the easier one is if you go over to your recurring invoices section here, you can edit any line item as you're building it out to customize the pricing. So what I mean when I say that is if I open this recurring invoice here, I'm going to say, yep, I want to create a new line item. I want to bill off of the RMM package. I want to bill off of, you said it's monitoring plus AV. So my price apparently is zero. So let's pretend it was hundred dollars i want to give them a discount of 50. you can just edit the price right here add that to the template and it, this correct updated price will be listed here for the specific customer for this recurring invoice template so that's option number one option number two is you can also do this with contracts so this works for a, any product so when you're initially building out synchro you're saying here's everything i want to offer to my customers every product every service every labor line item um, let's say for remote labor you're charging 200 dollars an hour but if you wanted to give your customer a discount you could build out a contract that is what contracts are used for so i'm going to go ahead and open one here 
and this is created to specify per customer pricing. You can say for Larry's business per this contract, I'm usually billing my labor at $250 an hour for him. I want to offer a discount. He's a small business. I want to help him out in his first year. Let's build him 125 bucks an hour Add the override. This right here will add this updated pricing to any estimate ticket or invoice. So this is going to be more of like a blanket pilot, like blanket uh, application for this customer, no matter where you're adding this line item to. Um, but same thing here, if you're billing off of, um, you know, the, the pricing package, I forgot what it was called. Uh, right here, like level one silver, level two gold, you can pull all of those are going to be products in here as well. And you can say for level two, which is gold, I'm usually billing 50. Um, I want to give them a discount of 25, add that to the override. So you can do it both ways, just dependent on what your personal preference is there. So that's what I have for you there. Um, thank you so much. Um, this is your 15 minute warning. So if there are things in the chat box you wanted to go ahead and grab, please do so since those will disappear as the session disappears. One Stop IT Solutions is verifying here some training links. So um, the YouTube channel is dropped in there. This is actually where the recording of this session will be posted either later today or on Monday. And so if you want to come reference back what we shared today, you can absolutely do that as well as past open office hours. Um, sessions and then I also dropped just our getting started playlist as well. Um, these are also these videos I believe are also in the training tab inside the Synchro account and so you can reference those there as well. Awesome and also to um, go back to they have another question about some additional training sessions and we will we'll reach out to you and let you know and give you um, those registration links as well. Um, I was going to address, I think I'm like, I'm assuming this is from the sales sheet. Um, the uh, Richard is just wondering any specifics to elaborate on the marketing doc item below. Um, the other seem obvious, but not sure how this is being done. Will and the the text is will audit your network and device security prevent breaches or vulnerabilities data loss and ensure your team is empowering or employing industry best practices in their daily operations. So there's a couple things here. Um, one, the sales sheet is definitely um, some of those things you could think of them as like examples or placeholders for you to be adding your value prop to display to your customer. Um, I think our thought process between, you know, behind this is essentially, you know, whether you're using antivirus through Synchro or any other security tool, like if that is a service that you provide to your customer, we were just trying to help you with the verbiage of how you might state that, um, state that that's the value that you're offering your customer. So it's not necessarily like, um, the point is for you to update it and edit to match what you are offering your customers. That's just kind of a, an example and an idea for you to use. All right, Dudley asked, is there a way to manually run a scheduled invoice? We had to turn it off and now they are a month behind. Absolutely. So I'm going to share my screen. If you come into your recurring invoices, and you pick one, just pick one. There is this run now. It won't run in arrears, like as of whatever date it should have run, but you can run it now and it'll run um, and you can get that out to your customer as, as soon as possible. Well, okay. The queue is empty right now. <laughs> just we, that was like a flurry of questions. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for all for you guys came ready on a Friday. <laughs> like you brought the energy, which I love and appreciate. So thank you very much. Um, uh, I know I'm just seeing there's like several different links being posted, our YouTube channel, that kind of thing. Um, and could you put the link to the marketing permission in the chat box? So the it's in the chat box and maybe Christopher, right? I see it in the chat box, the marketing materials. Um, so yeah, it's definitely in the chat. If you if you came late, I wonder if we should copy paste and put it again, because um, you might not see it if you came a little bit late. Um, 
but yeah, that's really helpful. Those marketing materials and the canvas cool. Like I, <laughs> I use it almost daily too. And it's like, it's very fun and easy to use. And so, um, hopefully you guys find that helpful. Um, I think this is a follow-up Carla to the question that you just answered from Dudley. Do you know? Let's see here. Is there a way to copy the scheduled invoice? They have dates on them. So customers think it's a duplicate. Is there a way to copy the scheduled invoice? They have dates on them. So the customers think it's a, um, you could conceivably once the invoice has run, you could come in and clone it. Um, and that would have uh, theoretically a different date. Um, that's the only way, there isn't a way to, to exactly match uh, to, to have two separate ones, but you could clone an existing one. Sweet, okay. All right, we have 10 minutes. What else you got? Nick, I know you have more questions. I'm like, I know, I know there's more questions. <laughs> We're going to remember your name, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. It was fun. That's yeah. what we're here for. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm going to show up as like anonymous next time or like a totally different name. <laughs> well, thank you for the nice, the nice words, Nick. We appreciate um, you all for joining us. I mean, the community is really, I mean, what makes us so happy with what we do. So we appreciate you guys showing up and returning every week. So that's awesome. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to text her right now. I'm going to be like, Brandy, Nick is a problem. <laughs> I promise I won't do that. <laughs> I won't. I will that you were here though she'll she'll appreciate that <laughs> um let's see here Corey wants to know is it possible to create a ticket or resolve a ticket from the mobile app it i think both right yeah mm -hmm. are you carla's carla's over on her mobile app right now. I'm, I'm, I'm checking but i i'm pretty sure both are available and of course now it's taking forever let's see i'm gonna pick one The resolve is not obvious, and from and to create so I it is my understanding that it is doable, but it isn't obvious in here. Um, so um, I would definitely check out the documentation on this because. Yeah, it was my understanding that we can, but it is not showing itself to me right now. So um, mm -hmm. if you can't reach out to support because we should be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go ahead, go ahead, Tatiana. Yeah, I love this from from uh, from Fuzi. He says, happy Friday, best team. Happy Friday, best community. Super happy you guys are here. He says, well, a while back we talked about a deep dive session about scripting. And also, if we can have alerts when there are new scripts added to the library, I agree. I'm gonna ping. I'm gonna ping some people for you, Fuzi, and it'll be Crystal and probably somebody else, but mostly Crystal. But just as a reminder, just because we do, we understand the power that the synchro scripting engine holds, especially with the community library and the PowerShell module. There's so much flexibility, so many different options, plugging it into the automated remediation, all that good stuff. So. Um, I hear you. I will post it about it, and I will. Yeah, Corey says I second the scripting session for sure. I'll drop. I'll drop into the chat box for you guys if you guys haven't seen. We did do a scripting uh, kind of deep dive. It's been a while. I want to say it was last year, but it's probably been like two years because there hasn't. There's no concept of time anymore. <laughs> well, everything we've been through. But I'll I'll drop that into the chat box for you guys. Um, if you want to take a look, that was the latest deep dive on scripting through Synchro, but I would love to have like a live Q&A um, or at least like best practices or like 
top 10 used scripts and how to maximize them or something like that for sure. I hear you. Yep, absolutely. Um, okay. We have a new customer that will be bringing in associates or referrals. Those associates will be operating in concert as part of our customer. Should we add them as additional contacts under the primary customer or as separate customers? Great question. So if they're operating under the main customer, I'm reading that as you would be sending an invoice to the same place. Um, if that's the case, then yeah, I think adding them as a contact because you can have contact custom fields. So if they were a referral or associate, you could have like a, them as the contact, but then you could have like um, a custom field there. The reason I ask, you know, or the reason that in concert is so important is that if you were billing separately or if you needed to report totally separately, that is the use case for creating them as a totally different customer. So hopefully that helps. Um, Randy, I 100% support this for the community. Do we have any doc templates, mailer templates, automated remediation examples, things others are using that would benefit the community just thinking out loud? I love that you're thinking out loud because um, this is something that we have wanted for a really, really long time. Like the, the group here has wanted for a really long time. So um, I, that is something that we're working on. We'd like to be able to provide additional, almost like our community script library, we would have community automated remediation library, that kind of thing. So um, I know the team is aware of that. So thanks for saying that out loud, appreciate it. Um, and then uh, for Dudley, I love this. Can you guys do a feature request Friday or another session? So a couple of things on that. Um, if you're not a member of our Facebook group, I definitely would join. Every once in a while, you'll see Andy post a quality of life improvement. It's like a community driven track um, feature. Basically, it's like a request thing. So we'll see like 300 requests and they will want there'll be a winner or two winners and we will build that feature so i would definitely look into that um and then um the other part of that oh whenever you see um a webinar coming up for what's new in synchro what i have found is that like that seems to be like i show everything that's new and then like the second half of it seems to be like this is all great but i want this <laughs> And this and like I find that 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 actually seems to be a pretty interesting forum for feature requests as well. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, just to follow up on the mobile app, I did find where to update the status, and so I just posted that in the chat. But there's a status option against technician on, or underneath technician in the ticket. And then Nick has just a follow up question on queues: Is it possible to prevent a tech from being able to see one or more tickets? Uh, that is a feature request at this time. We'll go ahead and pass that along. The only way to limit uh, that would be to use a single customer permission group, but you cannot assign text to like particular customers, so they could only see those specific tickets. Um, MTQ. <laughs> well, this was awesome. This was this was a really fun session. So again, I just want to say thank you so much, Carla. Um, your time is very valuable. We appreciate you. Uh, your insight on the on the technical side is awesome. And I know that you know you've um, started your training sessions with probably a lot of the folks in this community that are here today. So really, really appreciate that you're here. Um, My pleasure. Glad to be here. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, so resolve tickets in phone app show up. How not to show them? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and Corey wants a consult, Carla. <laughs> I want a consult with Carla. Are you kidding? Like it's <laughs> weekly schedule. <laughs> um. um. On the resolve tickets, I, there's n not any way that I'm aware of that we can um, tell it to not show them. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. That, that would be a feature request. Yep. Um, we can double check too. Yeah, Andy, for sure, show up next time if we hopefully maybe we'll have another response. Um, oh, funny. It sounded like I said MTQ. Yeah, yes. 
<laughs> you know how much we love our acronyms here, like in the MSP space, it's like everything has an acronym. I'm like constantly Googling things to figure out if I know what I'm talking about. Um, awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody for joining us. Have a happy, safe, healthy weekend. Enjoy yourself and we will see you next week. Thank you.